Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy's Table Studio. I am here with an update on my 30-day journal. And I'm going to go through what I've done so far. And then I'll be back for a third one whenever the, you know, till the last of September. So, let's start on September the 10th. Um, my husband went to the grocery store and got us a watermelon and a cantaloupe and I swear that is the best tasting fruit I've had in a long time. Um, in order for me to find an image of a cantaloupe I just went on and put the word in images of cantaloupes and this is one of the images that popped up. I don't think my cantaloupe is very round but you know it's it's my interpretation. <laughs> um, but it was really good cantaloupe. Okay, the next one is, the next day was September the 11th. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about this one, except for um, I remember exactly where I was when all this took place, and I will never forget this as long as I live. The next day was the 12th, and the night before, my husband had gone to get, he had gone to run an errand, and while he was in another city that has a Chinese restaurant that we really like, he picked up Chinese food for dinner, and that night I had fried rice with beef. Now, beef is not that hard to chew, but evidently it was too much for my tooth, and part of my tooth snapped. Now, this is a tooth where I had lost the crown, and... The crown was in a Ziploc bag in my purse because I needed to go to the dentist to have him put it back on. And meanwhile, when I ate some of this fried rice, something I felt something snap, and boy, did it smart. It really hurt. So I took my finger in there and wiggled around part of the tooth, um, and it was not coming out, but it was bleeding, and it was painful. So the next morning or the night before, I looked up what time the dentist office opened. They opened at 8, so at 8 o'clock, I got on the phone and said, yo, I really need to see the dentist. I, I'm in pain, and my tooth is bleeding, and so she said, can you be here at 8.30? I said, you betcha. So I went in, they pulled my tooth, what was left of it, and I got the beginnings of an implant. So I go back in December for them to do part two, and then I think in January is when I get the actual tooth on the implant. So I'm excited about having a tooth that doesn't hurt or bleed or pop off. Well, the implant side from the tooth comes off once in a while, but at least it's repairable where this one, they, you know, they could not fix my tooth. The dentist did tell me when he put the cap on that he wasn't sure how long it stayed on. I think it stayed on about three or four years and that's it. All right. The next day was Friday the 13th, so it's like three things in a row this, this that, that, that week. Tristadecophobia is the fear of the number 13. So I looked up how to spell this, because this is a doozy. Um, while I was looking it up, it came up with a bunch of... Uh, I don't know if it's mythology or what it what it, what you call it, but there were three different examples of why people are afraid of Friday the 13th. And the one that got my attention the most was the one from the Vikings. This is Viking mythology. Loki, the 13th god, is said to have interrupted the banquet of Valhalla, where 12 gods were invited. Loki's brother, Baldar, was then accidentally killed by a spear given to him by Loki. And so that's why um, a lot of people are paranoid, upset by, nervous with Friday the 13th. <laughs> I just thought this was so interesting. The thing is, is I watched all the series of Vikings on Netflix. And I think this is why this, this fascinated me more than anything else. Tristadecophobia. Hmm. Okay. Let me put this under here. The next day was a Saturday, and um, I had seen that there was going to be a Lily and Iris show, um, sale in Cleburne, Texas. And they went to, I think it was some kind of an elementary school. And they 
uh, took brown paper bags, like, you know, the full-size old grocery bags we used to do, and they rolled them down. Then they took a laminated photo of a blooming iris that corresponded what was in the bag, taped it to the bag, and then everything was set out on long tables, and you just go and you pick out what you wanted. Um, it was very cool, and I saw some really beautiful irises, some double-bearded, the single blooms, Japanese. I mean, goodness gracious, they were so beautiful. But I didn't buy any irises. <laughs> I bought daylilies. We bought daylilies because we have a, a side of our house that is the bane of my existence. Every year I go out and pull weeds, we plant stuff, and then I go out and pull weeds and pull weeds and pull weeds, and I'm sick of it. So I want to put stuff that will bloom on its own, knocks out um, a lot of the area where weeds will grow, and irises do the trick. We had them in Virginia Beach by our front door, and they were thick as thieves, and weeds were at a minimum so that's why I'm planting the irises I was so excited to um, use orange and kind of shades of yellow on this one that I went just bonker crazy on the, <laughs> the next page um, I learned how to make these cutesy little flowers from fodder school I don't know if it was one and two or what I think one was where it started and then I did that um, creative summer retreat and then somebody kind of did them the same way so I thought well uh, let me do my shades of yellow and oranges and I just went crazy on this page <laughs> I don't know what happened but I went nuts saw a video on YouTube that was very interesting to me I've been following this lady who likes Japanese art and Japanese papers and she was doing something that I found very fascinating and then I painted what I did with um, these Japanese charcoal paints. I really like these and I don't use them often enough. They're in my watercolor drawer but what I wanted to show you is not not the actual paint itself it's the names they used. Reddish, yellowish, greenish, bluish, purplish, and brownish. Aren't those clever names? <laughs> All right, so the next day we had to go grocery shopping and I went to Waco with my husband and we went to Sam's. And um, then I said, okay, fine, take me by Michael's. They're on the 30% off sale. The yarn. I went in there and picked up two of these um, Karen cake things. They were huge. And I got two, yarn, two skeins of baby yarn. That's all I got. I tried to show some restraint. Um, and so I thought I would I would paint this to show that I bought yarn at the at Michael's. Then comes the next day. The 18th of every month I get some kind of a shipment from um, Amazon that's on automatic ship. So by the 12th of the month, they send me an email saying I have to declare what I want in the shipment. Basically, my shipment is whole espresso beans for my machine I have at home. So this last month, I changed my order up from one, from one bag to two bags. And then I freeze the second one. Well, they messed my order up something wicked. And I spent 45 minutes on the phone with them trying to either get a refund or my second bag that I'd ordered. And clearly, it shows that I ordered the second bag and I paid for it. But I went through all kinds of rigmarole to get somebody to do something about it. Um, Starbucks said, I mean, um, Amazon said, oh, you need to go to Starbucks. Then Starbucks says, oh, you need to go back to Amazon. And then Amazon said, well, we're really not responsible for this. We take your money, we pass the order on, and they do the shipping. I'm like, I don't care who does what. You either send me the other bag of coffee or you need to refund my money. I only wanted the refund for one bag of coffee. Really, that's all I was asking for. Really what I wanted was the other bag of coffee. Putting it simple. And they refunded both bags even though I only got one. So I'm going to take that money and I'm going to buy two more bags of coffee. <laughs> Just wanted one lousy extra bag. Then uh, that was on a Tuesday or Wednesday. 
I don't know. I, did, I guess it was on a Wednesday. And then um, there was a chat group that meets on Thursday. Now, ordinarily, I would write people's names in here, but I, I didn't want to black them out with um, tape. And I don't want to put someone's name on there who doesn't want their name on there. So I just did the little squares to represent all the peeps that I could, because usually it's like, I think, eight or nine people that come. Um, and they're always full of really great ideas. And I got two patterns, one knit pattern and one crochet pattern. And then I got an idea for my um, inks that I think my husband's going to work on today. But I really appreciate belonging to a group where people share their ideas freely. And I get a lot out of what their ideas are. I've tried a couple of them and I really like them. And then... One of the ideas came after the group was over through a, a DM through Facebook with a certain person who shared Hirschner's sale. And in the sale, what caught me was, I think she sent this, that they had fruit-themed fruit -themed striped socks, self-striping socks. So they had the watermelon, the strawberry, the blueberry, the grapes, and... I think in all there were 12 fruits. There was an orange, dragon fruit, plum, banana. I mean, there were just 12 different fruits. And uh, these are the ones that I ordered I could not resist. I mean, they were the cutest stripey things, and I, I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I have enough yarn for three lifetimes. And I am trying to stick to working through my stuff, but my goodness. Who could resist such cute stuff? Then the next day I woke up and I couldn't breathe because fall, I think, is approaching here in Texas slowly and begrudgingly. And I have fall allergies. I'm not a springtime fall pers uh, allergy person, but mine are in the fall with mold and mildew and that stuff. So I woke up the next day and my head was killing me and... Um, I spent all night sneezing, and, and then I couldn't breathe the rest of the day. It was just kind of a miserable evening. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so then after that, I um, I was looking at the top of, I have one of those Billy bookcases from Ikea, and I was looking at the top of the bookcase, and I was thinking, I know there's books up there, art books up there, but I don't remember what's up there. So I got up on the step stool, and... I got accosted by five inches of dust. So I got the Swiffer out and cleaned it off. And I thought, well, I can't stop there. I got to keep going. I mean, I got, you know, I got to take care of this. So I fixed all this stuff that was just stacked up in piles on top of the bookshelf. And this is a um, stair -like container that has nothing but ripped out magazine pages and stuff in it. So I took a wooden crate that I had in my closet and took the stuff out of that and put it on a shelf. And then I took the wooden crate and I put all the books and magazines and things like that in there to make it look better. That's all this is about is just rearranging stuff so I can I can see what I've got and hopefully use some of it. I say that with apprehension because I have a feeling it's really not going to happen the way I'm hoping it will. <laughs> and then the last thing is I... Um, painted my container where all my watercolor brushes are. I, ha I bought this, um, I don't want to use the word serviette, but I don't know what you call it. It's a metal thing that has a ring, a stem and a ring in it. And there were three of these um, ceramic glass things I bought at Tuesday morning forever ago. And I didn't, I don't use the metal part, but I store my paint brushes in the ceramic thing. So that's what this is. It's a picture of all the watercolor brushes in this. And then there's a picture. I painted the um, beep -a -dee 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 watercolor palette that I was using because I had been painting this. And so I thought, well, these are kind of important. So that has caught you up with my week two and a half or whatever it was, 12 days of painting in this book. I've had a good time doing it, but I've had to remember every day that I need to do it. And sometimes it's a struggle um, because I live a very 
quiet, uneventful life. So, um, it's hard to come up with something that's um, paint worthy. Yesterday, at least I had two days of creative some things going on. <laughs> so, I still have the rest of month September to go, and when the rest of the, when when September's over, I will come back. And I will tell you the last few that I've got left. And that will be the end of this book that was inspired by Book and Paper. I'm sorry I can't remember the lady's name, but I remember her website. It's called Book and Paper. I just like the idea. She did one in August, and I saw the video. I thought, well, shoot, I can do September. Come on. Um, some stuff I struggled with. Some days it just wasn't that stinking exciting. Well, most every day it's like that. But I wanted to try it to see if I could commit to it. So the month of October will be Inktober, but it'll be a modified Inktober. I'm looking to see. Oh, here it is. So I had a discussion with some friends who shared a website that shows the prompts for this Inktober's Entangle thing. And if you guys remember, probably maybe not, it's too long ago. I got this book in 2019, and it's a tangle a day. So you do one every day, a different pattern. And I worked in it until June of that year and haven't touched it since. So I was thinking about making another book, and they said, well, why don't you just do it in this book and do it for the month of October? I was like, oh, well, that's brilliant. So here is the October calendar. The days and stuff are all wrong, but I don't care. It just numbered from 1 to 31. So this is what I'm going to do the um, Zentangle Inktober in, is this book. And maybe it'll inspire me to finish the other months in it, and then it'll be done. One can only hope. <laughs> Alright, so that's it, everybody. I will see you guys in the next video. And I do appreciate all the new subscribers that came from... I'm thinking via Shannon Green, who talked about the um, inkless, um, shoot, what do we call it, Ink inkless impressions, I don't remember what it's, what, we take the, I'll put the right name in when I do the video, because I can't remember what it is, but Shannon did it, only she went way further than I did which was very cool to watch somebody else's mind work off of one little thing you did and they went crazy. So um, I do appreciate the new subscribers. I hope I don't let you down. I do a little bit of everything. I don't just always make books. I don't always do Zentangle. I was that um, jack of all trades, master at none. I kind of feel like that as a crafter. Yeah. So that's it. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.